Hello everyone, and welcome to my tutorial on how to get your Dreamcast online using DreamPi. So what exactly is DreamPi? DreamPi is custom software for the Raspberry Pi mini computer that was created by Luke Benstead. It takes your existing high-speed internet and transforms it into a dial-up connection that can be used by your Dreamcast. While there have been other methods of doing this in the past, this one is by far the easiest and cheapest. It's also a lot more polished and streamlined than the other methods, and has a fantastic service called Dreamcast Now that shows when other DreamPi users are online and what they're playing. If you're looking to get your Dreamcast online, DreamPi is definitely the way to go. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need and how to set it up. So let's get started. Okay, so here's what you'll need. You'll need a Raspberry Pi. Any model will do as long as it has an Ethernet port. You'll also need a power supply for the Pi. Make sure the power supply is 5 volts and supplies at least 1 amp of current. You can check this on the power supply's label. You'll also need a 4GB or larger SD or micro SD card depending on which model Pi that you have, one standard RJ45 Ethernet cable, a Linux compatible USB voice modem, I recommend the Dell NW147 or the Lenovo equivalent. A line voltage inducer, this one is a USB powered line voltage inducer cable and supplies the voltage needed over the phone line. You can either build one yourself or buy one pre-built from the Dreamcast Live shop, a link to that is in the description below. Alternatively, you can also purchase a all-in-one modem which has the line voltage inducer built in. This is also available from the Dreamcast Live shop in the link below. If you purchase one of these, you'll just need a standard phone cable. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is download the latest DreamPi image and write it to our SD card. Now, I'm only going to be covering how to do this on Windows because I assume that's what most of you will be using, but I will put a couple links in the description to show you how to do this on macOS and Linux. So the first thing you'll want to do is open up the web browser of your choice, in my case it's Mozilla Firefox. Once that's opened up, you'll want to go to dreamcastlive.net. And once that loads up, you'll want to go over to the download section. So once you're in the download section, you'll want to look for the two files that we need. The first is the latest DreamPi image, and also the Win32 disk imager. Go ahead and download both of these. The next thing we're going to want to do is plug in the SD card that we'll be using with the DreamPi. You can plug this into any standard SD card reader. If you have a laptop, chances are you probably have an SD card reader built into it. But if not, you can use an external USB card reader. As soon as you plug in the SD card, you should see a window like this pop up. Please take note of the drive letter, in this case it's E. If you do not see this window pop up, you can open up computer and take a look there to see what the drive letter is. If you're still not sure, if you have multiple devices plugged into your computer, it may be a little bit confusing, so just unplug the SD card and plug it back in to see which one disappears and comes back. Just take note of this drive letter as you will need it later. The next thing we'll have to do is install the Win32 Disk Imager. So just double click on that, click Run, click Yes at the security prompt, click Next, accept the agreement, Next again, Next again, Next again, and we can create a desktop icon just to make it easy to find, and click Install and wait for it to finish. The next thing we'll need to do is extract the DreamPi image from the zip file. All you have to do is right click on the zip file and click Extract All, and then when the window pops up, click Extract and wait for it to finish. Now what you'll want to do is open up the Win32 Disk Imager. And once you have that open, make sure you have the correct drive letter selected under Device. This is the same drive letter that you took note of earlier. Once you have the drive letter selected, click the blue folder icon and open up the DreamPi image that you extracted earlier. Once you have that selected, we are all set to write the image, so just click Write and click yes to continue. And that's it, we now have the DreamPi image written to the SD card. Okay, so now that we have everything we need, we can now plug everything in. So the first thing we need to do is take our SD card and put it into the SD card slot on our Raspberry Pi. Next, take your USB modem and plug it into one of the free USB ports on the Pi. 
Then take the USB cable from your line voltage inducer and plug that into another one of the free USB ports on the Pi, and then take the phone cable end from the line voltage inducer and plug that into the modem. If you purchased an all-in-one modem from the Dreamcast Live Shop, all you need to do is plug in the modem, and then plug in a standard phone cable. Next, take the other end of the phone cable and plug it into your Dreamcast modem. Next, take one end of the Ethernet cable and plug it into your router, and the other end into your Raspberry Pi. I should note that it is possible to use Wi-Fi with your Dream Pi, but this requires additional configuration. If you wish to use Wi-Fi, you can check out my video tutorial on how to configure Wi-Fi for Dream Pi. And finally, take the power adapter and plug it into your Pi, making sure that when it powers on, you get a solid red light. So now that we have everything plugged in, just take a look at your modem and make sure both lights turn on once the Pi is fully booted. This will tell you that the Dream Pi is ready to accept the connection from the Dreamcast. Okay, so now it's time to configure the Dreamcast and test the connection. We can do this with any version of the Dreamcast web browser that was released in the US, also called Planet Web. You can also use DreamKey 3.0 a copy of Quake 3 Arena, or even Unreal Tournament. In this tutorial, I'll be using Web Browser 2.0. So once you have the web browser all loaded up, press Start and go to the Web Browser Options. Once you're at the Options page, go over to Internet Connection. Okay, so here are the settings that you need to enter. Real name can be left blank, user login should be Dream, password should be Dreamcast, dial-up number should be 111-1111, Backup number can be left blank, and DNS 1 and 2 can be left at 0.0.0.0. Once the settings are entered, hit OK. On the Dial Options page, you can leave area code you are dialing from, long distance call prefix, call waiting prefix, and outside dial prefix blank. Make sure modem init is set to AT and F0, this is the default. Dial should be tone. Dial area code should be off, and blind dial can be on or off, it really doesn't matter. And finally, on the proxy settings page, make sure use proxy is set to no, and the other two boxes are blank, and then click OK. And back at the main options page, click the save button. Okay, so now that we have all the settings configured, we can now test the connection. So just go down and click on the connect button, and wait for the Dreamcast to dial a connection. Once it dials a connection, it will try and load a web page. If you see a web page load just like this, then congratulations, your Dreamcast is now connected to the internet. So as I mentioned earlier, Dreamcast Now is a service that allows you to see when other DreamPi users are online and what they're playing. By default, you'll be assigned a random username and a generic avatar, but chances are you'll probably want to at least change your username to something a bit more descriptive than unnamed 0000. To do this, the first thing we'll need to do is plug the Raspberry Pi into a TV or monitor. Simply take any standard HDMI cable, plug one end into the Raspberry Pi, and the other end into an HDMI input on your TV or monitor. Now power on the Pi and take a look at the output on the screen. Once it's fully booted up, you should see a line that says my IP address is. Take note of this IP address and head on over to your computer. Once on your computer, open up your favorite web browser and navigate to dreamcast.online slash now. Once the page is fully loaded, click on the configure button at the top right of the page. At this point, Dreamcast Now will try and automatically detect your DreamPi, but this doesn't always work. That's where the IP address comes in. Simply type your IP address into the box and click the button that says detect. And now you should see a page like this where you can configure your username and your avatar. First thing you can do is type in any username you want in this box. To set your avatar, you'll need to create an account on gravatar.com if you don't already have one. Simply navigate to gravatar.com, click on the Create Gravatar button, and fill in your information. Once you've created your Gravatar account, you can then upload an avatar. And now that you have an account on Gravatar, you can simply type in your email address that you used to sign up for the account, and click the Update Profile button. And that's it! You now have your own custom username and avatar for Dreamcast Now. Okay, so one last thing we're going to do is configure your home router with DMZ. 
Now I'm not going to go into exactly what that is, but suffice it to say this is required by many online Dreamcast games in order to function properly. Now it isn't required by all games, Phantasy Star Online and Quake 3 Arena are examples of games that don't need it, but most of the other online games do. So if you want to play all of the online games, this is something that you'll need to do. So here's how to do it. Head on over to a PC, tablet, or phone that's connected to your home network and open up a web browser. Before we proceed, you'll need to know the IP address of your home router. In the last chapter we found the IP address of your Pi, and this will come in handy again here. Type in the first three octets of that IP address into the address bar, in other words the first three sets of numbers before the last period. In my case this was 192.168.1, and add .1 to the end of it. This is very likely the IP address of your router. Hit enter and you should be brought to the configuration page for your router. Here it will ask you for a username and password before you can proceed. You may already know what these are, but if not you'll need to find out. This is sometimes written on the label on your router. If not, try and look up the default username and password for your particular router on Google. Once you've entered the username and password, you'll need to look for the DMZ setting. The location of this setting will vary depending on your particular router, but it shouldn't be too hard to find. In my case it's under NAT slash QoS. Just have a look around and you should find it eventually. Once you find the DMZ setting, enable it and type in those same three sets of numbers that preceded your Pi and router's IP address followed by .98. This is the IP address of your Dreamcast. Depending on your router, it may only ask for the last digits, in which case you can just enter 98. Now click the Apply or Save button. There you have it, your router is now configured and you're ready to play any game your heart desires. And that concludes this tutorial on how to get your Dreamcast online using DreamPie. If you have any issues, make a post in the Dreamcast Talk forum thread in the video description and we'll be glad to help you out. While you can post questions in the YouTube comments, I recommend posting anything technical at Dreamcast Talk as you'll be able to get more help there. If you were able to get online successfully, check out DreamcastLive.net for instructions on how to connect to the private servers for each game, a schedule of weekly online events, leaderboards, and all the latest news relating to Dreamcast Online. Also be sure to send a thank you to DreamPie's creator Luke Benstead by posting a comment on his blog or shooting him a tweet on Twitter. Links will be in the description. If you found this video helpful, let me know by posting a comment, liking the video, or subscribing if you so desire. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope to see you online soon.